Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.
by taking you to the hospital. If it wasn't her, you would be dead. What do you think the person should think as to what you have done? What should be the natural response of this particular individual towards you? Should this person say, get lost, I didn't ask for any of that? Or should it be one of gratitude and thankfulness and say, thank you for very much for what you've done. Yeah. I'm, you know, sincerely grateful to what you've done, what you've given me. Yeah, you would, yeah, you would think it would be gratitude to helping save your life. You know, at the same time, interestingly enough, um, you know, also, if it wasn't for the signs that we have today, or is what we call it, you know, going to hospital and all of that, and having somebody do a transfusion for your blood and, you know, kidney, whatever it is, if it wasn't for that, then, um, you know, that person wouldn't be able to use those particular things to help save your life. So in some regards, I, I also wonder whether we are acting as God, you know, doing things like that. But at the same time, I guess it's something that we have now. So maybe it is something, it is his will or, his, you know, whatever. I don't know. So when you say acting as God, you mean there are things that we do which are godly in terms of the, the actions deserves yeah. merit and praise and thanks. For example, if you are kind to someone, yeah. if you are helpful to someone, if you are caring to someone, these actions yeah. are something praiseworthy. And the Creator created us with these noble uh, attributes to live by in the first place. So it's not that we become God, it's something that we are created in our makeup to live our life accordingly. And, and that slightly reflects the nature of our Creator that we can understand that God, our Creator is even more in His attributes, infinitely more compassionate, infinitely more kind, infinitely more caring, infinitely more loving and so on. So the point I was making is, the person who was saved by yourself, by taking that person to the hospital, the natural response is one of gratitude Thank or thankfulness. Yeah. Now think about now every one of us. If we have been given life and created in this world with two kidneys, with our whole blood system, circulatory system and so on and so forth, not only that, the means to sustain our life by taking in oxygen, yeah? by taking in food and water, utilizing that making into energy, getting rid of the waste product. Shouldn't our natural response be one of gratitude to the one who made us? Yeah, I would think so, yeah. So the essence of worship, when we say God created us to worship Him, the essence of our worship involves this gratitude, that we should be thankful and grateful to our Creator, and, and know our Creator. And that is the reason the Creator created us, and also fulfill an obligation of following what is required of us while we are here. So if our Creator created us to live in a particular way, and we didn't, then we haven't really accepted our Creator as our Creator because we made our own wishes and our own whims our own God by living our life as to what we think how we should live rather than how we should live according to the reason our Creator created us. Well, you know, I think that line becomes a bit blurred in some regards because you have prophets, you have people who, you know, feel God speaks to them. And, you know, I think anybody who worships God feels that He speaks to you. You know, you pray and you feel to do marry this person or to go to this country to do some ministry work or whatever it is. You feel so sometimes, but at the same time, you know, God created good and evil. So, you know, sometimes the saying a blessing in disguise, you know, maybe you're looking to um, do something that uh, everyone was against you and you felt you couldn't or it became impossible and actually you discovered maybe years later that actually I really wanted this but this wasn't right for me and I see that now um, through learning other things so sometimes you know people can be used to do what feels destructive in your life 
but actually it's all for a bigger picture a bigger reason and um, greater understanding and you actually end up helping someone else through pain and suffering you've experienced years ago you help someone else in the future so I don't know I'm uh, you know I just know the life that we live it's not um, perfect, you know, um, and there's so much that happens and so much we can't explain, you know, so I do think, you know, you can only follow what you feel and, you know, whether you get what you feel through your worship and your own relationship with God or simply, I don't know, through friends, they say that God can speak to you through other people, I don't know, but then if you don't have a relationship with God then how are you hearing from him and who are you really hearing from so I don't know it's yeah it's very open. would you agree the way to live our life the perfect way to live our life would be the one that the Creator has shown through his prophets and messengers the best way to live rather than making our own feeling wise way of life um, I would say so, but my question is, where are we getting um, the idea on how we live our lives? Because, for example, in Christianity, which I was raised, we have a book and it's called the Bible. And I know that you're Muslim and you have the Quran. And so I don't know where that, where that book came from, you know, any of these books, you know. And a lot of it is good. Most of it, you know, it is, it is good and it is way, a great way to live. Um, from what I understand and have seen. Um, at the same time, um, you know, it can be difficult as well because you have to be a strong person. You have to be spiritually strong, mentally strong, um, sometimes physically strong, emotionally strong to follow your path, your correct path in life. And it can be against even your own family or friends or the way to society that you were born into. Agree, agree. I don't know, it's, yeah. So when we, I mean, our concept of guidance from God is this, that God created human beings and did not leave human being in their own making of how they should live their life but he sent prophets and messengers and in fact he sent warners to every nation not a nation passed until and unless they had a messenger telling them what is accept, required of them what they should do what they should abstain from and so on so every nation had a prophet and a messenger in line with this the children of Israel having many prophets to them before they also had received another prophet called Jesus, the son of Mary, who came to remind them of the Torah and the wisdom and to remind them to turn back to God. But of course, what happened, as we know, is he became deified by people's over um, extreme passion and zeal and love. He became the son of God and God the son eventually in the belief system of Christians. When in fact, he was a messenger of God, a mighty one indeed, you know, to tell the people worship none but God and worship him alone. We believe he received revelation and guidance. He was given a, a, a guidance called the Gospels, not the Gospel of Mark, Matthew, Luke and John that you hear, but the one that God gave him to preach to the people. Now obviously what happened is people then started recording about what he did and they started collecting writings and they made them gospels. There are many gospels written, not only these four. Yeah, yeah, many, many. Right they only chose these four for yeah. their own um, particular purpose and, and so on. So what we are saying is, how do we then know how much of this original guidance is still intact from the time of Christ, from the time of Moses and so on and so forth? having seen the corruption by people over the centuries how people because of their own wishes and whims and own agenda they corrupt the guidance of god they corrupt it because they don't like it imagine a book says do not oppress people um give to the poor what is due to them help them and then you have some people who want to get richer and richer in expense of the poor people they don't like it and they want to change this they want to change this word of god and that is why that is why when the quran when the quran when the quran came as a final revelation from god it gave people 
the evidence and the guarantee and the confidence of the evidence that it is from God so that we can have certainty that this revelation, this guidance is from God and the preservation of that message so that people do not have any confusion as to how we can follow this Quran when we don't know whether this was indeed this book that was given to the final messenger Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and indeed this is the book which has the evidence that it is of a divine origin. Well I thank you so much for sharing with me your belief in God and how you believe in, in him and um, unfortunately I do have to go. <laughs> you said yeah, you were formerly a Christian but you don't longer subscribe to Christianity or? Are you open to other like Islam? I um I was raised I was raised um, Christian and I believe in God, um, but I I I just don't follow it under a religion. What do you personally. think of what my brother said to you about? Uh, I think I think there's a I think there's a lot of truth. I think there's a lot of truth in a lot of scriptures and you know what you're telling me now. I think there is a lot of truth. Um, you know, but I think I need to study. I think I need to study, you know, to because I haven't studied enough and looked enough to for me to feel comfortable to subscribe Absolutely. In, in, in truth. But I think if we have encouraged you even a little to read the Quran and reflect on it, and I think this meeting was successful, that we had a good conversation. Thank you so much. Any, any, any last questions? You, any formal questions? Any objections you have? No, but I'm sure. Anything you want to know? No, I'm, there are 101 things, but I genuinely don't like, have the time right now. What's the most important question? Know. One last question. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> know. I don't have one right now, honestly. But. It's a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. Yeah. Hopefully, we will, our parts will meet again and we can talk and we can even explore a bit more on, 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 on Quran, on Okay. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the last messenger and Allah our God the creator I would love to know how I genuinely would yeah. Yeah. so I mean I will talk to but, um, it's easy to get a copy of the Quran mm. as a physical copy of the bookshops or even reading online mm. and, and listen to it. I would urge one thing listen to the Quran this is the month of Ramadan in which the Quran is recited everywhere in the mosques in the masajid you can easily tune in the Quranic recitation online just listen to it and see how how yeah. this has Give a try. I will try to make the time. Sure. I will. Beautiful recitations online on yeah. YouTube. Just like any any chapter of the Quran. What is your name? I'm Danielle. Danielle. Nice meeting to you. Nice to meet you. You nice take care. Thank you. Okay. All right you. then. See you. You done? Yeah.